Let's take a look at this problem. We got f of x is equal to x minus 2 to the fourth power. Now the first thing we're asking for is the domain. Well, since it's polynomial, it's still negative infinity, positive infinity, exists everywhere. Then we need to find the x-intercept. You always plug 0 into the other variable, so I'll plug 0 in for y. So we've got 0 is equal to x minus 2 to the fourth power. Now whenever we have parentheses to a power equal to 0, you can just set what's inside the parentheses equal to 0. So we've got 0 is equal to x minus 2. Take the negative 2 over, and we get x is equal to positive 2. Now our third thing is find the y-intercept. Again, you always plug 0 into the other variable. So we're going to plug 0 in for x. So I got 0 minus 2 to the fourth. Negative 2 to the fourth power gives us positive 16. So that's our y-intercept. Now d, e, and f. We got our vertical asymptote, we got our horizontal asymptote, and we got our slant asymptote. There isn't any of these. You have to have a rational function in order to have those. Rational function means a single fraction. G, I think, is increasing. Yeah. So increasing, decreasing. We need our first derivative. So f prime. This is a chain rule. We've got parentheses to a power. So we'll take our power, put it out in front. What's inside the parentheses remains as is. You lower your power by 1. And then you multiply it times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. Well, the derivative of x minus 2 is 1, so I drops away. And we've got 4 times x minus 2 to the third. Now we want to set that equal to 0 and solve it. So we've got 4 times x minus 2 to the third equals 0. Now the 4 we don't need to worry about. We'll set the x minus 2 equal to 0. And we get x is equal to 2. So that's our critical value. Set up a table of intervals. Here's negative infinity, here's positive infinity. We want to choose test cases. Something between negative infinity and 2, like 0. Something greater than 2, like 3. Now we want to plug those into our derivative. Our derivative is right here. Well, if I put 0 in, the 4 doesn't do anything, it's positive. 0 minus 2 is negative 2 to the third power is negative 8 times uh, 4 is negative 32, so this is decreasing. If I put 3 in there, 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 to the third power is 1, times 4 is positive, so this is increasing. So this is going to be decreasing from negative infinity to 2, and then it's increasing from 2 to positive infinity. Now H, our min and max. If your uh, increasing and decreasing changes and the point exists there, then that's going to be your min or max. Well, this is decreasing, changes to increasing, so this is going to be a min. So we'll have a min at um, 2 comma something. Well, if I come back to here, if I put 2 in here, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 to the fourth is 0. So this would be 2, 0. Okay, I. Uh, concavity. We want to take the derivative again, so we want to find our second derivative. So the 4 stays out in front. Here we got parentheses to a power, so I'll take my power, put it out in front. What's inside the parentheses remains as is. Lower your power by 1, and then you multiply it times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. So 4 times 3 is 12, times x minus 2 squared, and the derivative of x minus 2 is 1, so that drops away. Now we want to find a critical value, so we set uh, this equal to 0. 12 times x minus 2 squared is equal to 0. Now the number we don't need to ever set is equal to 0, but I'll set what's inside the parentheses equal to 0. So we got x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x is equal to 2. We want to build our table of intervals. Pick test cases, something between negative infinity and 2, like 0. Something greater than 2, like 3. And we want to plug them into our second derivative which is right here. Now this one, uh, we don't need to actually even plug them in. 
because 12 is positive, and when we square something, it's always positive. So positive times positive means it's always positive. So this is concave up, and this is concave up. So for concavity, uh, it's going to be concave up from negative infinity to 2, and then it's going to be concave up from 2 to positive infinity. J. Uh, POIs. Our point of inflections is where the concavity changes. Since concavity doesn't change, there are no POIs. Now for our graph. Okay, we said, um, let me try to make that a little bit bigger. Didn't realize I had that much space. There we go. Now, um, we said our y intercept was 16. So let me throw that up about right here. And that's our y intercept. Halfway would be 8. Halfway up to 8 would be 4. Then between 8 and 16, um, is that 12? Yeah. Okay. Now our x intercept. X intercept is 2. Well, 2 would be about uh, halfway there, so maybe right here. That's 2. Now, um, let's see what else we got. Min. We said we got a min of 2, 0. So 2, 0 right here is also a min. Well, that tells us something. Then it's decreasing from negative infinity to 2, and then it's increasing. Okay, so it's decreasing, comes down here, touches here, and then it's increasing. We try to sketch it, so I'm not very good at these. Okay, going down there, comes down here, touches at a point, goes back up. If this is our min, I know it has to touch that point and go back up. Can't go below it. Um, that would be our, our sketch of our graph. Now, we can't see all of that if we were to plug it in the calculator. Let's take a look at that. And if I press y equals clear, beginning parentheses x minus 2, closing parentheses the fourth power, so caret 4, and then graph. And you see it's a little flatter down there than how I drew it. Oops. But we don't see where the inter oops, our y-intercept up there because it's you know up off the graph. But you know it is a pretty good representation what we see there, um, even though we can't see the y y-intercept. Anyway, those are our answers.